Good morning. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am good. I am good. And for our listeners, we are mid Easter holidays. Woohoo. We've snuck up six six seventeen to film a podcast before the day begins, haven't we? Yeah, yeah before <laughs> anybody else wakes up. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the sun the sun hasn't even woke up yet, my where are yes, you? Yes, I know. I know for for YouTube. Yeah, mine is still very well. It's very blue, yeah. actually, isn't it? It's very blue. Yeah. yeah. Um. So amazing. So how are you doing? How's the holidays going? Yeah, good. What were you day four in? Day four. Yeah, first week of Easter holidays. Good. The weather's been well. The weather wasn't too great yesterday, but we headed off to IKEA. Yes, so that was fine. Taking yeah. the kids to IKEA over the Easter that was entertaining. Um, great space for hide and seek. Yeah, <laughs> the two you realize like, yeah, have actually lost your kids. <laughs> um, um, that was that was good. Um, but prior to that, the weather's been great. So we've just been outside, which has been so so good. Like, yeah, oh, such a sun bunny. Um, but yeah, we've just been to parks and in the garden and. Yeah, just getting outside and running around yes. to tire ourselves out for the day. So, um, yeah, really good so far. Thank you. And what about yourselves? Oh, amazing. And yeah, yeah, good. All good. We had that obviously good weather and that was a game changer, wasn't it? Like, I feel yeah. like just having tea outside, like, was so lovely. Um, and, and this is my favourite noise. I don't know whether this is a bit weird, but I love the sound of cutlery being eaten when, when you're using cutlery outside. Yeah. Isn't that oh. just a real summer sound? It is, isn't it? And literally, it fills me. It's such a little thing, isn't it? But it fills me with gratitude that the weather's getting better. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just such a, It must be something nostalgic for me as well, like from yeah. childhood. But that cutlery clunking when it's outside just makes a different noise. <laughs> I love that. That's great. I mean, every time, any time I'm feeling a bit meh, I just nip outside and rustle some cutlery <laughs> on the table outside. <laughs> I love it. Well, you yes, soon. Let me know when you do. I love yeah. that. Oh, <laughs> Film it for well. me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was lovely. And then yesterday, we put this on our Instagram, didn't we? We have both yeah. been on a bit of a decluttering mission because we know that when we when there's stuff clear in the house, our mind is clearer and we create magic and... I think both of us have been feeling a bit consumed in things, haven't we? Like um, we've had piles of paper everywhere. Um, and I kind of, I wanted to, I've had a little moment actually as I went to bed and that was what I wanted to talk about today. I have always wanted to have this kind of minimal house that's like, we have one room where I've done this downstairs and it's my favourite room in the house because there's not much in it. Yeah. And that is still homely, it's still beautiful but there's not much in it and it is so easy to clean and keep on top of and just enjoy. Yeah. So I've been on this mission for minimal living and obviously I have said before, this top room that I'm sat in currently, I mean, it's our loft room. It's the only storage space that we have. So obviously it's going to have a lot of stuff in, but it's been a bit crazy. So yesterday, spent the day decluttering it. Phase one. Phase one. But as I went to bed, I thought, and this is a shift for me, phase one is phase one. There's going to be a phase two. There's going to be a phase three. Because historically, I would do something, burn myself out, and then I'd never do it again. And it gets to the state it has been recently. So I thought I'd share this because if we want to live a certain way, we've got to keep choosing that certain way. And I that was a bit of an aha moment for me because I thought that, runs through everything in the house I'm I get frustrated because I'll put together like a way of organizing something but it doesn't work and a few months later it's back to where where it begun and I just kind of sat and thought you know what a like just that one strategy might not work for us I can change it and b I'm not very disciplined in it I can't expect it just to be how how it was when I started and this kind of obviously covers a few topics of taking responsibility, but then the the power of choice and continuing to choose to put things in a way in the away in the new spots that I've picked and to not let that drop. So I thought we could chat about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you when you were saying about um 
because I can totally relate to this oh my gosh <laughs> like, literally <laughs> like oh where to start with this one so on the creating like new strategies in the home for putting things away and creating new spaces I have done that on many occasions and like you are oh, it's not the strategy is not working but what I was going to ask you actually on that is is but but you kind of you kind of came to that solution yourself anyway is it the strategy or is it the lack of follow through and I know for me the strategy is absolutely fine yeah and I can blame the strategy excuse me <clears throat> I can blame the strategy when I liked but it's actually the follow through and the discipline yes of just putting the goddamn stuff away <laughs> you know? and also yeah getting rid of the stuff that's not needed in the moment yeah. rather than it building up and that's going to be a shift for me yeah a big one is the girl's artwork <laughs> mm. <laughs> but having a holding space for artwork that then I sort out every few weeks or just allow it rather than it accumulating like you say and and not following through having that that's something in place and I'm not a strategy person and I've put myself in that box for a a long time but recently we've been needing strategies in TAGC and I'm blooming loving them oh yeah oh I know you know I miss I miss strategy you miss I strategy. miss strategy process I love a strategy in a process yeah and I think I think with regards to our environment it's so important isn't it to to just keep it a space that that works for us and I just want to highlight what you just would what you said a moment ago about this minimalistic living it's, it's not it's not for everyone you know and yes. it's not saying clutter's mm-hmm. a necessarily a bad thing because you can have your spaces looking really really fabulous with with all your all your things and your trinkets yeah. and your you know and your pretties all around but it's just I think the the bigger picture is just having this for me it's having this organized space that I don't want to spend my days and my time constantly tight like having so much stuff that I'm having to like tidy up and put away yeah. and the more stuff to clean and the more stuff to organize so I too am on this mission of like less is more yeah this mission min- minimalism in the home because it is isn't it like clear clear space clear mind like mm. I also shared yesterday on my Instagram so Charlotte really inspired me just to get going because um I had a much a much smaller task on my hand than Charlotte did because um it was essentially just my my study was my um my workspace my table my desk was just it was just just covered in paper it was like somebody had just dropped like I don't know a hundred sheets <laughs> of paper paper on there and just scattered them um, all over my desk um because I, I do like to write things down um <laughs> so um but yeah so so I, I it was quite a, a, an easy job for me to get organized and tie that away yesterday but then we we as I mentioned we we shot over to to Ikea because oh, I think it was probably the end of last year if not earlier last year I had planned out a better working space for the study with some Ikea furniture so a better desk where me and Mark could sit at together or the girls could sit out and do their homework together um, and much better storage so that like the files weren't on show and we've got some really like tatty shelves and yeah basically be- better organized and better storage and I think just this whole follow-through is like I've now got the stuff it's now sat in the spare room and it's not kind of it's it's not just like powering through and getting it done as quickly as possible and like you know not having it done properly but for me it's also not like not letting my foot off the off the gas and kind of just keep going because I've got to take the shelves down there's there's holes in the wall from like where raw plugs have been where stuff has been put previously yeah so I've got a bit of filling work to do a bit of sanding to do a bit of painting to do but I know once I've done all that if I have this follow through yeah and then get the study set up like it's just gonna be a really really great space to work and yeah. I'm gonna come in not that I don't love coming in here but you know I've been like rolling my eyes at this place for well over like I don't know six eight months and it's just it's just yeah sorry I th- I'm tangenting a little but the bigger picture I think here is this is this personal discipline and this follow-through and obviously we're talking about yes. this with regard to our environment at the, mo- at the moment but we can apply this to many areas of our life so I think it's just having that like it is living as as you want that person that you want to be like now not like oh when I've got this minimalistic home yeah then I'll put the stuff away or then I'll you know keep it clean and tidy it's like well 
in order to have this minimalistic home and be this person that I want to be with this clean and clear environment, I need to start doing that now. I need to yes. follow through yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so I know we're, yeah, we're both... <laughs> We're both holding each of them massively accountable for this. We are. And anyone else who wants to do this, get on it with us. Let yeah. us know and we will do it together because having that accountability is amazing. Um, and I think we both needed it because we both had a sneaky message to each other, didn't we, yesterday of like, are you doing it? I don't feel like doing it. And we're like, no, do it, do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you've just you've literally just said it. Like it's about that discipline and it mm. like that follow through being that person now um and another thought process that I went through yesterday was I almost had my go my stay pile and then I went back through it and I was like do I want to do this again in a few months time or do I want to just get rid of it now because there was so much like emotional attachment to things and we did this in the decluttering masterclass like also guilt attached to things you know where you've spent money on something and you've not used it to what you wish you had maybe and you feel like it's a waste of money to throw it out so you keep it and it keeps you there feeling bad about it makes you feel guilty every time you look at it like it's getting rid of things like that because they can go on to a new home and be used or they can sit make you feel guilty and clutter your home yeah and that was a good realization for me yesterday to just let go of things but it did have to be the second time round on some things, yeah. um, which and is a, That's a big part of decluttering. There is a lot of emotional attachment to things, like yeah. you have to use other kids' artwork and stuff. And, and and yeah, things do hang around, and they're just a reminder of, like, ah, look at how much you spent on me and look at how much you're not using me. And, like, yeah. do we want to do we want to stay in those feelings? And it's just kind of going through that process of, like, that acceptance and being like, okay, I'm ready for this to move on. Yeah, I'm a real stickler in... Um, my, one of my thought processes when I hang on to stuff is, oh, I could do something with that. Yes, <laughs> I'm yes. I'm like, I'm a real like, yeah. Or I'll, I'll need that, or I'll use that at some point, and I've got to let yeah. go of that because it's like, you know, like pieces of wood. I'm like, I'll oh, hold on to that because I could, that might come in handy. But like, yeah. actually, if I need a piece of wood to do some whatever that might be with it. I could just go and purchase a piece of wood. And I know that's like, obviously, I'm not wanting, I'm not, I'm not saying here, like, just throw everything and buy yeah. new. Absolutely not. Um, but what you do let go of, it can yeah. be re- reused, repurposed, recycled, passed on. Yeah. Um, so somebody else has another opportunity to to use it. So it can be seen in a really good way that it's it's getting a new life somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah. And um, that's a flip on it, isn't it? Like, yeah. absolutely. And with Was regards it... to the kids' artwork, sorry. Like, it's like... This is this is a challenging one. <laughs> it's like, how much do you keep and how much do you file in the B1N? Like, yes. do you know, at what point like, it stays, we've got a little area in our utility that like stays there for a little while. And if no one's mentioned it, like, because, you know, the moment you put something in the bin, they go, oh, where's my favourite, most favourite piece of artwork ever I did? And you're like, seriously, dude, like, that's been sat there for like four weeks. Yes. Like, it feels like it has to have like a little area that it stays in for a little bit. Yes. Or yeah. anyone notices. And then it's like, right, okay, we're going to let this one go because there's not a huge amount of meaning to it. It's, you know, it's another piece of artwork that we know they'll do more of. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just being okay with that as well because I know personally, I like hold on to these things. It's like, oh, I'll need these as memories. But it's kind of yeah. trusting that you'll have these memories and maybe like a dozen pieces of artwork over you know over the time is enough and we don't need like I don't know 700 pieces to to crawl through literally behind this computer right now is my pile of memories and I'm already looking at it and I'm like I need to get that into two boxes which I can still add in like I watched Stacey Solomon um someone recommended this to me recently sort your life out is it so you know I've not my mom's been telling me about this I've not watched it but I great really, really show. want to yeah so I'm going to be watching a few episodes of that to keep me going to phase two phase three and phase four amazing <laughs> um but she just this lady was really struggling to get rid of her memories of, of yeah. children you know she'd been through IVF and different things and there was a lot of emotional attachment to these things and then she just put them into all of her children had one box and Stacey sorted all these bits out and they all had one box each, and I just thought, "Oh, Stacy, please, can you come and just do that for me, please?" Yeah, <laughs> Actually, yeah. Like, it's great. That's all it's... you need because yeah. I love my mom kept hold of everything, and I love that. 
but equally now I've got it all and I'm yeah. now like <laughs> I'm like that's another thing that I've got to saw and yeah. as much as it is so lovely to look back through those if I just had one box I think I would have I could just hold on to that one box so yeah. I'm thinking from that now rather than moving it with every house or every move where we where we move through our life let's just have one box for them yeah. for the for even like the first five years and then they could have another box for five to ten yeah yeah, yeah. we've done that with um, the girls we've, we've absolutely done that so they've got a box each um and then I've got my own personal box with like memories like there's some like gig tickets I like to keep like certain tickets and things that I keep um but that just really helps massively just having a box each because yeah you know where it lives it keeps it neat and tidy it'd be a nice it'd be a nice looking box if it's on display um that's a really good tip um what I'd love to just explore a little bit really quickly is just the, the discipline like how do you build the discipline because it's not it's not a motivational thing you're talking about com- two completely different things here yeah and my view is that discipline is like a muscle like yeah. you've really really got to strengthen it and you've really got to train it and I think um one thing I can sort of use in terms of like where I've really really built discipline over the last probably 18 months I'd say now is is my morning magic like I never it, it started with a label I'm not yeah. a morning person so I had to change that straight away because for as long as I kept telling myself I wasn't, I just wasn't going to be. No. So I had to, re- like, had to reposition that in my mind and use different language to say, oh, well, I am a morning person. And then I had to figure out what that looked like for me. So what that morning practice was. And then once I'd done that, I had to gradually bring it in and not expect everything off myself immediately. Yes. You know, oh, I'm going to go from like being the last person dragged out of bed to the first person that gets up at 5 55 a.m and practice gratitude journaling go for a walk meditate like you know it's bite-sized pieces isn't it it's, it's it is. with these like building blocks for long-lasting change so it's gradually building it in and then it's just doing it like there's no magic secret here really is there no. it's doing it and it's doing it on the days where you don't feel like doing it because no one's going to do it for you and that's that discipline isn't it and over time then it just becomes it does become easier yeah. there still will be days where they'll be a bit like oh I really mm-hmm. don't fancy this but it's that internal talk it's that internal dialogue that that is your savior in those moments isn't it where it's like but come on if I do do this now a I know how I'm going to feel after and b you know I'm going to feel I'm going to have had that follow through I'm not going to be letting myself down, yeah. disappointing myself. And with that comes confidence as well. Yes, um, 100%. And just to add to that, the difference I feel this time for me is being aware of that, being aware that it's not a one-time thing and I go back to live, living how how I always have done. It's flexing that discipline muscle. Then also have a really clear reason why. <laughs> yeah. Like for me, I want that minimal home so that I can be a fun mum. <laughs> so yeah. that I'm not tight. Like at the minute, I can feel myself going round and round saying the same things. I'm like, put that away, do this, do that, do that. Like I'm annoyed with myself for saying the same things to the girls. And I just think like they can do what they want in their rooms. That's absolutely fine it's not on them how much stuff we've got and why I'm feeling overwhelmed with this pile of papers and this there and that there. Like, so it's about really absorbing myself in that reason why. And the other thing is I want a really inspiring space to work from and a really comfy one because I've said this to you, my back, my neck is killing me because Mm -hmm. I sit on this chair, on this desk that I can't get my legs under on a wooden wooden kitchen chair Mm -hmm. and this is where I work from like every single day Mm. and my body is going Charlotte sort yourself out so my reason why I want to be a fun mum and I want a creative inspiring place to work so having that really clear vision for why I want it and also I've put the end date of the end of April yeah like that's really game changing for me this time around in terms of this yeah. um, and doing something. So that's going to help me flex that discipline and go, yeah, it's not just phase one this time. We're doing phase two. We're doing phase three. And if yeah. there's a four, we're doing phase four. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And you're, you're a hundred percent on the, you know, right there with um, the reason why like that's got to be the route. Yeah. It's got to be a deep reason why, why do we get up? at whatever time we get up in the morning, 5.55, 6 a.m., and do those morning practices. Why do we do them? Yeah. Like, it's not easy, 
it's not easy but we make ourselves do it. I'm me per- personally speaking from me because I'm a different person when the kids come down. Yeah. If I've been on my morning walk or I've had a moment to journal, to practice gratitude, to meditate, I am in a different, I'm in a different gear for the day. My yeah. mindset is set. I've set my intentions. I know who I want to be. Yeah. I know how I want to think, feel and behave for that day. Mm-hmm. I'm not leaving it to chance. I'm not leaving it to autopilot. I'm not leaving it to be reactive. Yeah. But my de- and that's my deep reason why. Mm. It's because I have such better days when I do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's going to be it now for for me and a minimal, like a minimal home is what I want. Like, and I know that now, like you say, it doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be everyone's goal at all. Like you can right. have more stuff and absolutely feel, feel better about it and make, make decisions to, to do it. But I think I have sat in that room that's minimal. That's my place. That's where I yeah. want to be. Like, yeah. like I've got a bookcase downstairs that needs organizing, but having all my books in a place where I can go and pick one on a morning, like, I know I want that like rather than having it filled with stuff that I don't need and so that's going to make me continue to do it and no that's not going to be easy because every time that you know we get that lovely landing of all the children's artwork I'm going to have to be disciplined with myself and and sort it and and get that holding space but then whoops a a week after get it gone or sort into their boxes um so yeah how empowering is it to take this it's it's taking this 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 power back isn't it like it is, control yeah. in a really in a really positive way that we make that like, this is conscious choice in conscious decisions Definitely. to make this change to follow through and to be disciplined with it and nine times out of ten um when we're sat in frustration yeah. it's because we aren't doing anything about it and I've yeah. experienced this in life in many different ways. Yeah. Um, I think towards the end of last year, I was getting so frustrated with how we were eating as a household. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, and it was down to, oh, because I wasn't doing anything about it. I was waiting. Yeah. I was waiting for my husband, Mark, to to come to me and go, right, come on, let's let's meal yeah. plan and this and that. That's never going to happen. No. Like, I know you've sat in frustration with this room for such a long time and yeah. I hope you don't mind me saying this no this is exactly what I've done here and in many ways in my life you've done nothing about it no but but absolutely. then that frustration just builds doesn't it and we can yeah. you know this can be in so so many different areas of our life if we're feeling frustrated mm-hmm. and we're waiting for external things to change or other people to make change yeah we're going to stay stuck and we're going to stay in that frustration so we really have to focus on what we yeah. can control and go and make those things happen And you've just said it. And I think it's taken me a while. This was another thought process to do that and feel empowered through that. Feel like extra proud of myself, not feel resentful that I'm the one doing it all. Like, no, because when we be the change that we want personally, because like you say, Mark might not want that healthy habit right now. And that's okay. Dale doesn't want a really organized minimal home right now and that's okay but they're both going to benefit from those changes like that but it's going that's that's what I want and it mm. is a knock-on effect like they mm. will benefit from it but we've also got to appreciate that they don't want those things right now they're not going to get up and do it and do it for us mm. and like that's been a really great shift to not be resentful about it stand in my own and be like yeah I really want this I'm going to make it happen mm. and choose empowerment choose like yeah like this is amazing because this makes me a better person like Dale doesn't get frustrated about there being mess everywhere like he can still be the same dad in no matter what's in the house but for me personally I am a better mum when the house is just clear and I can see to play or I can see to pull that game out and put it back with ease and not yeah. shove it in a cupboard that it won't quite And then shut in. the door really quickly yeah. so it doesn't fall out, yeah? <laughs> We've got one of those cupboards. Yeah. You, you've just hit the nail on the head there with something. So, so this this whole, like, um, healthy eating and just kind of, like, be, you know, better meal planning in the home uh, towards the end of last year um, with wanting somebody else to to want that like the frustration I was sat in I was totally sat in waiting for Mark to want it as well and I mean I'm sure okay obviously he's going to massively benefit from eating better but he wasn't going to be that person that I wanted him to be in that moment so I was getting oh my gosh I was getting so narky about it I was getting so frustrated so wound up about it 
And then I had to make that decision, like you've just said, to go and be that change and just do it because it was something I wanted so much. Yes. That I just went and did it for me. And then everyone else benefits anyway. Yeah. But that's when I could come out of that frustration because I could just act on it and exactly. do it and empower myself through that and not wait for not wait for others and I think this is you know this is a thing that we do in life don't we we wait for whether it's like other people or circumstances or external things outside of us to change yeah. to do those things actually if we just take the reins and go for it and be the change and it can be uncomfortable and it can require yeah. another level of like effort and you know 100%. But my gosh, it makes a difference. It really does. It really does. And it's freeing, isn't it? Because you're like, then you see the power of your choices and your actions when you choose to actually just do the things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. So there's quite a few takeaways here, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've gone discipline. around the houses. Of yeah, all so things. discipline. Discipline is a muscle that we need to build. Yeah. And it's doing the things, find that deep reason why, first yes. of all. Yeah. really really look for it and how can you do that guys you know we're journaling advocates yes. pen yeah. to paper like why am I doing this but yeah. why but why be that irritating four-year-old yeah and keep asking yourself why 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 and peel back alert those layers until you get to the root the real yes. why yeah and then use that anchor that so find your reason why then go and do those things Mm -hmm. and make the things happen and do them consistently and keep showing up for yourself and keep proving to yourself that you can do it build that confidence yeah and then what was our other takeaway stepping out of frustration yeah I was gonna say we've kind of done it in our little little process it's taking responsibility taking action and taking note isn't it yes and that action it's continuing to choose and continuing to act it's not one action and done no. And that's wherever this is for us. It's a circular self-empowerment process. We take responsibility for those things that we want. We take action on those things. And then we be proud of every single move we make. And we keep moving and we keep moving. We keep going around this, this thing. And we'll have moments where resentment might pop up, guilt might pop up, all these different emotions. But when we're ready, take responsibility again take yeah. action, take note yeah. and keep seeing all that we're doing in the take note bit. It's seeing it. It's giving yeah. ourselves the credit for it. It's empowering ourselves through what we're doing yeah. um, with that reason why yeah. <laughs> as the root, like you say. That's it. Amazing. Amazing. Right then. So we're accountable. Yes. I'm not going to say next time we show up, we're going to have shiny new backgrounds because um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a work in progress. And like yes. I mentioned, um, you've got to make some curtains. You've got I've got some painting work to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... But in the next few episodes, that's yeah. By the end of yeah. April, we're gonna we're gonna have a new backdrop, guys. Yeah, I, I may not I may not have April. I'm just mindful. I'm away. I'm away. Oh yes, um, I'm off yeah. to Barcelona. Yeah, um, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, however, it won't be far after then. Yes, amazing. It might be after then. Um, amazing. So, so backdrops coming soon. Backdrops coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> tune in for new backdrops. How exciting. <laughs> amazing. amazing. So thank you for listening, guys. As always, we are here for you. Um, if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the podcast, just reach out and let us know. Yeah. And if you are on a decluttering mission, tell yes. us. Yes. Share it with us. Raise your accountability. We will hold you accountable. Um, yeah. Reach out to us and let us know. Um, and yeah, you've got this amazing amazing brilliant see you soon guys bye bye, bye.